Hello, hello, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I don't even really know why I decided to check this movie out because I kind of knew what I was expecting going in. I kind of got what I expected going in for the most part. Probably there was one reason. One big reason why I decided to check this film out. I am talking about The Pope's Exorcist. This is a 2023 film that was directed by Julius Avery. And it stars Russell Crowe. And that's the one big reason. It's a horror movie that stars Russell Crowe. Now granted, you could argue that over the last 10 to 15, 20 years... Russell Crowe hasn't really been in the best or greatest films. Maybe a lot of his best movies came from the 90s or early 2000s. There's a couple of good gems, I think, here and there. But for the most part, his filmography, I was just kind of going through it. It's all over the place, right? But even still, an actor of his caliber, an actor uh, who, let's be honest, this movie... I don't even think he was bringing his A-game. I don't even think he was 100% fully committed. And even then, I thought he was good. Even Russell Crowe, halfway trying, is still better than most of acting that you would get, especially in a horror movie nowadays. He plays a priest. He is Father Gabriel, who he has his unorthodox way of performing exorcisms, especially... He doesn't always get the church to sanction them whenever he feels like somebody needs help. He's like a priest vigilante, <laughs> uh, which is kind of funny. But I think Russell Crowe is great here because not only is his character clearly more for helping people and doing what he has to do, but he has this sarcastic kind of fuck you attitude Right? When he's getting scolded by the head council of the church, he's just sort of like, eh, whatever. You know, nothing phases him. He's just sort of whatever about it. He believes in himself and what he had to do. And there's a few times in the movie where he's not goofy. His performance is not, like, goofy. But he is telling jokes. He is kind of... He's the only person with a sense of humor because of how dreary everything else is here. So I will say Russell Crowe, he's the sole reason why I watch the movie. And he is the best thing about this film. When you get to the main family who he is trying to help, it's a mother, a daughter, and a son. A year ago, they lost the father, the husband, in a tragic car accident. And so ever since then, the son hasn't spoken a word. And the daughter's kind of a bitch <laughs> to the mother. And at first, I rolled my eyes at this dynamic, this relationship, because I do feel like I've seen this type of situation between families before in movies, horror movies, where the kids are just assholes to the parents or the mom. And I'm not saying it's not realistic. I'm not saying that that event in their life wouldn't trigger this. It's not that. It's just I've seen this a lot. I kind of... Wouldn't it be nice if maybe before everything went to shit, if maybe they were a fun-loving family, you know, if they actually got along and you saw how well they were together. I'm not saying that's not cliche because it's like The Exorcist, the movie, the original, where they were a normal mother and daughter and then everything went to shit. But still, I think that's more effective and I think that makes me care more about the characters if they come across likable at the very beginning of course the son gets possessed by this demon that seems to call out father gabriel russell crowe by name says i want him for various reasons and and the demon possesses the son and i will say that the boy the little boy he was able to convey the demon voice that they dubbed over his like he was animated he was creepy looking at times and there was a lot that this movie did to try to make this particular demon seem more powerful seem more evil seem like it was a next level thing especially for russell crowe 
never encountered anything like this. This demon was able to get inside your head and pull out your deepest, darkest sins or things that you feel like you failed, throw it back at you. And not just people it possess. It can look at you and somehow know every dirty little secret you have and just throw it in your face. And it can also make you like hallucinate all these fucked up shit. So... They tried to do something a little different with it. I will say, though, that I have seen so many exorcism movies. I have. And you also can't help but compare this to the original The Exorcist just because that set the tone, the benchmark for what exorcism movies can be and should be if it wants to be effective. And so I don't want to do too much comparing, but it is a lot of been there, done that. They tried to make it the demon op right they tried to make it really overpowering and 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 very fast paced with the horror stuff but it also wasn't anything that blew me away as far as that went i will say there is another priest that tag teams this with russell crowe he's like his partner his sidekick and i thought they had an interesting dynamic and the ending, the third act, was very action-pack heavy. You could tell this movie had a bigger budget than what most horror movies do. And so, look, did I love this movie? Am I going to have this on my list for best horror movies of the year? Probably doubt it. But I will say that this is better than it should be. Better than it could have been. And, and it's an okay watch. I would give this... A good Netflix and chill. Oh yeah. So guys, let me know in the comments below if you too have seen The Pope's Exorcist. What did you think of it? Did you like it as well? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!